Okay, so it's Tuesday and it's time for a tutorial and, well, time for a confession as well because yesterday we tried to record a different tutorial. We did it three times, we failed three times and it just goes to show that sometimes you try things and they are just not destined to work. What we tried to do was use the Solana wormhole bridge to send USDC from Ethereum to Solana. And the reason we wanted to do that was because we wanted to try the bridge. Bridges are going to be a fundamental piece of infrastructure in the interconnected world of blockchain in the future. We've looked at the Polygon bridge, which worked. It was slow, but it worked. I tried the wormhole bridge on Solana yesterday. It also worked, except up to the point where we needed to get an Ethereum transaction mined. I did this yesterday. 24 hours later, we are still waiting for the ETH transaction to be mined, and it's worth having a look at this. We all know the feeling of paying high fees and waiting for transactions to confirm when interacting with DeFi. Well, no more. Solana has built a fast, censorship-resistant blockchain where you can build and use crypto apps that scale today. The network supports thousands of transactions per second with fees less than a cent and over 500 validators. To learn more, head over to solana.com forward slash defiant to get started building and join its rapidly expanding community. And this week is Solana Week on The Defiant. I'm not going to post what we did yesterday. It was a painful, painful process of just figuring out how to do this thing. And it's not because any of it's specifically difficult, it's just some things are just not ready yet. And I think for something like the Wormhole Bridge, there is a there is a consumer-facing website where you can bridge assets, but like for you and me, that's not how we're ever gonna interact with these protocols. I'm actually looking at something like AnySwap, which is a cross-chain DEX that at the moment allows you to swap between BTC, between all sorts of different chains, like Fusion. And Solana is going to be plugged into this. We've got Phantom in there as well. What's going to be running underneath that are bridges. There's actually a tab which says bridge. And these bridges are amazing. They're just clunky as at the moment. And the wormhole bridge was no different. We built a bridge at Harmony. It was clunky. We used the Polygon bridge, a little bit clunky. Every single time, it's the ETH side of the bridge that trips us up. And so that tutorial went straight in the bin. So today, we're going to look at a different tutorial. A lot of what we were talking about is relevant, though. So we start like this. Yesterday, we looked at CoinGecko and we looked at where Solana is. Number 15 in the chart. Quick look at CoinGecko. This doesn't look so impressive, but if you look at the 90 day or even the 180 day, something is going on here that's propelling Solana upwards and upwards and upwards. And it's not pump and dump, that's for sure. There is a burgeoning growing level of support in this ecosystem, what it's doing. And primarily in DeFi, my light has gone off, where I kind of hang my hat. There's some really interesting things going on. We're gonna cover those in detail towards the end of the week. There's a lot to unpick here, not least of which is the proposal for building out SushiSwap on Solana, which is currently being voted on. Uh, that involves uh, Radium, which is the first AMM built on Solana. We're going to jump into that in just a second. We have the Wormhole Bridge, and we have obviously Serum, which comes from Sam Bankman Freed. It's a decentralized derivatives exchange. And the way that that ecosystem works, genuinely very, very interesting. That brings us back to Radium. Radium is an AMM. When you look at the interface, it looks exactly like Uniswap. Uh, what's the biggie? Well, the interesting thing about the Solana ecosystem is that you have this central order book built on Serum. And that basically means that Serum processes orders and Serum is also connected to FTX. I won't go into how it's connected to FTX because that's for Friday's video, but it essentially means that if you have an AMM, an automated market maker, like Uniswap, but it's built on Solana, then those AMMs can provide liquidity to that central order book. And that means that every AMM is not competing with every other AMM. So you remember that situation with Uniswap, where SushiSwap came along, Vampire Protocol style, and just sucked liquidity directly from Uniswap. That's not what happens in this ecosystem. Anything that provides liquidity is providing it both to this central order book and to all the other liquidity that's sitting around the ecosystem. That is quite a big deal. So you have this enormous plate 
of different AMMs, each with their own token, and and everyone can kind of dump, jump in and do their thing on that AMM. But all of that liquidity is serving everybody else in the ecosystem. And that makes it very, very interesting. And I don't quite fully understand how it all works yet, so I'm still trying to figure it out. So rather than doing a wormhole bridge tutorial, I thought we'd do a radium tutorial. That gives us a chance to look into the various wallets that you can use for Solana and get into some of the things I discovered while looking into this. So generally when we're, we're looking to interact with a DEX, because radium has a DEX facility in there, it does a bunch of other stuff that you'd be familiar with, liquidity, pools, farming, staking, this kind of thing, uh, and some trading as well. There you go, there's the trading interface. We're gonna be looking at some swapping and some pools and then probably staking if we can get it to work. It's been a little bit clunky today because of my internet for some reason. I think they're building downstairs. But anyway, what we're gonna look at now is what wallets you can use, why I would pick the particular wallet that I've used and why there might be another wallet coming that's better. And then we'll get into actually using Radium itself. And then we'll try and figure out you know, just how fast this thing actually is. One last thing to point out is that what I wanted to do yesterday was use the wormhole bridge to send some USDC over to the Solana blockchain and then do my work with that Solana, with, on Solana with the USDC that I'd sent over. It just didn't work out that way. So what I had to do was go to Binance, buy some Solana tokens, and then send those to a wallet that I set up yesterday. I'll jump into that later. But fundamentally, when I do these tutorials, I'm always trying to do it in a decentralized way. We are a DeFi channel. Decentralized finance means decentralized. If we're using a centralized exchange to do this, then yes, it's fast and it's convenient, but we're not actually true to the philosophy. With all that said, let's get into it. So. Just breaking down what Radium is, it's an AMM. It's essentially a Uniswap, but with some differences. And it serves the Serum central order book. So you see here, Radium provides on-chain liquidity to a central limit order book, meaning that pools have access to all order flow and liquidity on Serum. Ecosystem-wide liquidity, such a big idea. And it is the, the governing philosophy behind all the DeFi activities on Solana which is why it is interesting. Obviously, Solana's great appeal, fast, cheap. As the token price goes up, though, it becomes slightly less cheap, but still, it is, it's a fast, cheap chain. So far, so good. So <clears throat> what we need to do first is set up a Solana wallet. And there are a few different ways to do that. And generally, what I tend to do is, if, if you go to, let's go, for instance, to the Serum Dex. This is just uh, how you might do this. When you connect to a DEX, you need to connect a wallet. And when we connect to ask to connect to Serum, it gives us a bunch of options. So here we have Solid, Ledger, Solong, Phantom. There's one that's not uh, listed here, which is Soulflare, which is another Solana wallet. And the ones I'm particularly interested in are Solid, which has a Chrome extension, and Solong, which also has a Chrome extension. When I was doing my research, I landed on Solong for one simple reason. When I added the Solong Chrome extension and I set up a wallet, this is how I did it. So it's sitting there. And what I generally do is I click on this jigsaw puzzle piece here and I pin that extension so it just sits there and I can use it. Now, we set up a wallet, usual way. First, we do a password, something nice and memorable. Then we want to do create wallet. I'm going to call it tutorial. Actually, tutorial two for today. We get some seed phrases. I'm going to just make a note of those. So if I have to come back, I can. So I've noted those down and saved. All good. Make sure you save your seed phrase somewhere good and always make a backup. If you're actually going to do some more valuable larger transactions and activity, always back it up. So now we have a Solana wallet. Very, very simple. When I was doing this, the first time I did it, the test that I did, there was a button that came up here and it said, show me the money. Show me the money. So I clicked on it. In that instance, I got sent 0.01 Sol. Now, if you remember when we did the Polygon bridge, we were actually given some Matic tokens the moment we crossed the bridge which allowed us to get started. It gave you some Solana. 
and gave us some Matic tokens that we were able to power some transactions with. On Solana, in this particular wallet, if I want to add a token, let's say I want to add USDC, for instance, if I click add a USD coin, it will tell me I do not have enough soul to take this action. So it costs a little bit of soul to add a token. I don't know why. It wouldn't cost that on Ethereum, but for some reason it does, which meant that when I was trying to do my activities yesterday, I couldn't actually power anything even when I'd set up the wallet. So my recommendation would be, and I can't believe I'm saying this, get hold of some soul on an exchange like Binance, uh, wherever Sol Solana is traded. If you need to know where it's traded, just go to the markets page on CoinGecko and it will give you a list of exchanges. And it looks like it's very nicely supported. Binance, OKX, FTX, of course, Huobi, heavily supported project and lots of different places you can buy it. So uh, I would imagine most people have a Binance account. You might not, but if you do, that's the place to get it. And then at least you can kind of get started. Wow, it's trading at $45. Wow. So I'm actually now going to log into the wallet that I set up yesterday. Um, but well worth trying so long because it if you get the same thing as me and you manage to get some free Solana just to, to power some transactions, that'd be good. I think 0 0.01, yeah, it's like 45 cents. But still, it's enough to get you going. So I'm now just going to log into my wallet that I had before and remember your first DeFi transaction after juggling five plus tabs on your browser you gaze at that etherscan confirmation feeling like you just contributed to the future of finance except you got quickly lost in a world of gas prices vaults pools hard forks to gens and sushi chefs fear not Zerion has built the dream tool for managing your portfolio. Track all of your token balances across wallets and chains, access every kind of DeFi asset, including indexes, pools, and yield strategies, and trade at the cheapest rates with no extra fees. And that's because Zerion sources liquidity from every decentralized exchange, like Uniswap, 0x, and 1inch, and there's no sign-up required, no fees, and a blissfully easy UI. Simply connect your wallet at app.zerion.com. Io. Now, back to the tutorial. Okay, I'm back in. So now I have a, a separate wallet that I set up yesterday that has five sold in there. It also has these strange tokens here. These are 50 USDC that I sent from Ethereum over to Solana. And for some reason, one piece of the translation hasn't happened, or maybe it has happened, but there are 50 tokens in there that it can't read that are in fact USDC, but it hasn't spat them out in the right way. I will need to talk to the team at Solana about what's happened here and how I could do it differently. But for the moment, I would recommend against using the uh, the wormhole bridge for now, unless you really know what you're doing. It didn't really work for me. Doesn't mean it's bad, it just means I didn't understand it. So now we have five sol, and what I wanna do is go to the radium uh, swap. Um, the plan now is to add some liquidity to one of the pools. So I think I'm gonna do the Ray Sol pool. So if you're familiar with that in liquidity, you need equal amounts of two tokens or however many tokens are in the pool, and then you can make it work. So the first thing we need to do is connect the wallet. And so now we have some options here. I don't know Bonfider, but they are working with Radium. I think they're listed on the Radium page. Let's go down here. If I saw them, yes, they're listed here. So <clears throat> the one we want obviously is so long. Um, this one here, Phantom is very, very interesting. I'll be doing a first look on Phantom tomorrow uh, because this is a brand new one. This sort of appears to be the great hope for the Solana ecosystem, a wallet that can, can do all sorts of cool things. But for now, we're just gonna click on so long. Uh, oh yeah, we need to refresh the page and then we can come back and it will work. Don't let high gas costs keep you out of Ethereum. A balancer you can trade all you want and get most of the gas costs back in your pocket. In their new Baal for Gas campaign, traders are receiving six figures worth of Baal tokens every week. And with version two, Balancer is becoming the one-stop shop for DeFi liquidity. 
Balancer version 2 brings stable pools and weighted pools tightly integrated under a single protocol. Flash loans, lending via asset managers, and much more. Check it out at balancer.finance. So now we can just say, yes, please connect. I want to confirm. And now we're in. So now the decks can read my wallet. So what we're going to do is we're going to add some liquidity to one of the pools. And the one I'm going to pick is the probably the sole USD pool, which is this one. And in order to do so, I need to get hold of some USDC. So the first thing we're going to do is do a swap. So I'm going to swap from Sol to USDC. And I'm just going to do a small amount, 2.5 Sol to 112 USDC. And if you're wondering why I'm doing such small amounts, well, it's kind of this. The point of a permissionless open financial system is to allow anybody, no matter how large your stack, to join in. It shouldn't just be for the big boys. So if the fees are low enough and the chain is fast enough, then it should be very attractive to do so. So we're going to swap between two and a half Sol and USDC. We click on swap. We confirm. And then we wait. The transaction has been confirmed. So we swapped two and a half Sol to 112 USDC. Now, does it show up in the wallet? Yes, it does. So there we have USD coin 113. So now we're ready to add some liquidity to the pool. So now we just need to go and check which pool we were going to add liquidity to. So I'm going to use Sol USDC. And I just need to make sure that I balance up my the size of the equation. So what I'm actually going to do is click on max on USDC. And that will give me exactly the right amount of Sol tokens that I need as well. And now I can click on Supply. Always remember that you need a little bit of the native token like Sol to power transactions. You should never run it down to zero, otherwise you'll be stuck. And it's quite hard to do a transaction without any liquidity in your wallet. So we will confirm that transaction. The transaction has been sent. Should be pretty fast. Transaction has been confirmed, add liquidity. So now we have LP tokens that represent USDC and Sol. I wonder if they show up in the wallet. They may do, they may not. No, can't see them there. So now I should be able to stake them. Let's see, is there a Sol USDC? No, there isn't. Uh, well, I guess that's probably as far as the journey goes for now. If I'd picked uh, Ray USDC, for instance, I could have added some liquidity in here and staked some LP tokens. I haven't, uh, which is fine. Um, if you wanted to, then uh, that would be the place to do it. So it looks like only the Ray pairs are the ones that you can farm on Radium. So maybe in a future trend, uh, tutorial, we'll do that. But if you wanted to add those LP tokens to a farm and start uh, generating those rewards as well, then you could do, looking at the APR, 160, 150, that's pretty attractive. Once you start getting down here, eh, not so attractive. Um, you know, <laughs> in DeFi summer, you were looking at kind of four-figure percentages. Absolutely wild stuff. Will we see those days again? Part of me thinks that we might well do. Uh, I'm not sure when, not sure how, but um, very, very interesting. Anyway, so that's basically how to use Radium. What I'm very excited for, though, is any swap, this cross-chain DEX, and how all these bridges will be able to uh, swing tokens from one chain to another. You know it's going to be clunky to begin with, but there is going to be so much potential to open up liquidity right across the entire blockchain space so that those who are really hunting arbitrage opportunities or really hunting farming opportunities will have the complete buffet to feast on. Very, very exciting. So tomorrow we'll be looking at the Phantom Wallet the first time. Um, that was my first time really kind of playing with Solana. It's pretty cool. I, I want to dig in further and, and do more with it. Um, but yeah, there you go. That's Radium. So uh, if you have any suggestions for tutorials for next week, please leave them in the comments below. Uh, until next time, see ya.